At Church of the Holy Spirit, we believe in sharing Christ here, there, and everywhere. And one of the places that we're doing that, of course, is in Rwanda, in partnership with the Anglican Church and ICM, a ministry that builds churches all over the world. As a church, we've been talking a lot about Nkambo Island in Rwanda, and we're starting to see the fruit of our labors there. Thanks to your generosity, two church buildings were built there this year, and this summer a team traveled to see the dedication of these buildings. I'm an American, so I probably don't pronounce it right. I, we always say Nkombo, but it's really Nhumbo, Nhumbo Island. It's an island uh, in Lake Kivu that is actually part of Rwanda. It's 900 meters off of uh, Kamimbe or Changugu area. You go by boat. But Nathan told me about the island. It, the island is about 20 miles long and three to five miles wide, depending where you're measuring. And they speak a different language than the, they don't speak Kenya or Rwandan. Very, very poor. 90% of the people fish, and they catch fish that are about as big as your pinky. Um, well overpopulated, uh, a, almost a non-Christian island, really. It's one of the poorest places in Rwanda, one of the least uh, discipled, fewest, fewest number of what I would say real, real Christians. And so that, it was in Nathan's heart to address the extreme poverty and the spiritual poverty of that island. And so he took us over there by boat, and once we saw it, we we're like, oh my goodness. I almost felt like it was hopeless. And Nathan says, I tell you, I tell you, in five years, with God's help, we'll whip it into shape. And we're already seeing it. Well, I believe in building local churches. I think particularly in Africa or in the 1040 window, churches are the center of life, um, particularly in rural areas. That's where we want to focus. And I think that, uh, Building the church gives us the best chance to, to disciple people, to win people to Jesus, but also to disciple them. You know, they can worship under a tree for sure, but in, in their culture, um, it's not a real church. I mean, it's not really considered permanent. Um, and plus it rains and you know, there, there's weather and all that. I, I mean, once you have a church building, it becomes the center of that town or center of that village or of that rural place. So I think it's absolutely key to have a, a real building. Well, we, uh, we have qualifying criteria that we look at. Um, we're looking uh, obviously for uh, partnering ministries that have accountability, uh, that are willing to partner with us. Uh, but we also put a bit of, um, it's a partnership, so we have expectation on them as well. We're not just handing out money, but we're partnering with them. We want to get them connected with us. Uh, we ask uh, that each of the congregations that receives a church building within three years plants five daughter congregations. And that's, uh, that's taking effect and that, um, you know, in most cases we capture a lot of what is happening within that three year cycle, but far and beyond that, uh, we still see congregations being multiplied um, out of these base churches, these church structures that are being uh, built because of the impact that it has. We're still, we're still in, in about the first inning, you know, to use baseball terminology. Um, I was absolutely in awe of what has been, happened in one year. In one year, because of the feeding plans, uh, feeding programs that we've done um, with the local church, um, these children that were about to die actually are quite healthy. Um, and, and in the meantime, this beautiful church building has come, and it was built in the most difficult place to build. I mean, every brick had to be taken over by, by a canoe. Um, but in terms of what's happened there, we're just beginning to see the fruit of the labor. Um, the, bigger, the bigger work is not simply the building, but what will come through the building, and that's discipleship. Acts 2.42 is what we're talking about. You break bread, you have fellowship and prayers, and t the apostles' teaching. We, we must, we must disciple these people. Otherwise, um, it would all be in vain. We're not going over there just to build a pretty building for them. We want them to know Jesus and to be solid disciples. That's what we're investing our time and money in, nothing less. I, I think uh, when people see kingdom work and they see the kingdom grow, they get excited. People are tired of sitting in the pews and um, just the same old, same old. They want to see the kingdom of God grow. 
the kingdom of God expand. And so when they come here and they see transformation, palpable life transformation, it gets them excited. And, you know, oh, by the way, it hasn't hurt our church budget at all. We've built 15 churches through ICM. We haven't missed one penny. In fact, I'd actually say our giving's probably gone up. I know as, as a pastor, I get uh, people email me or write me or call me probably four or five times a week saying, hey, would you give money to this ministry or this person going on a mission or blah, blah, blah. And to be honest with you, it's quite weary. And it's just so easy to hit delete. Our church has chosen to invest in a few partners and stay with partners that bear fruit, that are highly accountable. We found an ICM over many years. I think we've worked with them probably 10 years and uh, at least 15 churches in China, Cuba, Vietnam, and now Rwanda. We found that this is a great investment for the kingdom. And so I would encourage you to check out ICM, check out the Mini Bible College, uh, or give me a call. Hey, here's my phone number. Like Bob Goff says and Love does, here's my phone number. 540-529-2282. 540-529-2282. Pastor Quig Lawrence, Anglican Bishop, I would love to talk to you about ICM. Thanks.